Now, listen, there are some, and a lot has been written, too, about this. Uh, even people over in Japan saying they would love to see you fight the monster, Naoya Inoue, who's considered pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world. What do you think? I believe, once again, <laughs> yeah. see, if I, if I break down, <laughs> if I break down, I, I'm not being biased. If a person, I'm like, oh, he's good. He's good. But I have to say this, if I break down that fight between me and him, before it happens, it most likely would happen until they work on what I was, what I'm about to say, but I'm not going to say it. I see me wiping him out clean, clean. He's too small for me. He's too short. His, his, his reach isn't there. I'm not going to sit there for that, 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 those, those power shots all the time. It's just a lot that I can just analyze off of him. He's good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not discrediting him, taking anything away from him. I took my hat off, but he's not better than me. I believe he's the, I believe the same thing that happens in Neri will happen to him. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So that was an interview that Stephen Fulton did with Brian Custer a year ago, talking about a potential fight with him and the Oya in a way. Now, a year ago when Stephen Fulton said this, it seemed like this was just a dream match. It was just a fantasy match that wouldn't happen because a lot of people felt that, in a way, he could just play it safe and just keep fighting against weaker opposition, weaker mandatories at the weight class he's at now, rather than move up to a higher weight class and fight the best competition that he's ever faced in his career, which would be fighters like Stephen Fulton, even MJ, and Raiz the Beast, Aline. Well, you fast forward to present day, and now all of those fights are very realistic now because in a way has made it official that he is now moving up to 122. And I know Stephen Fulton is looking his chops. And it's mainly because Stephen Fulton understands this is the fight that will take his career to a whole nother level. This is the type of fight that will definitely give Stephen Fulton the attention that he has deserved for quite some time already. And he can largely thank old media for that because they have hyped up Inoue so much. I mean, you got old media saying that Inoue is better than Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, and all of them. They're saying that Inoue is the real Michael Jordan of the sport. So if Stephen Fulton beats Inoue, that means he's beating old media's Michael Jordan. You know, I like the way Stephen Fulton, he answered the question when he was talking about NOA, because he said, basically, he sees so many flaws. And he said, if he were to break this fight down before it happens, the fight probably wouldn't even happen because he would basically be exposing all of NOA's flaws. And they would most likely try to go back to the drawing board and work on those flaws before they got in a ring with Stephen Fulton. Stephen says he would wipe out NOA clearly meaning he believes not only will he win this fight, but it would be a very easy fight. He compared it to when he already beat Neri, which was an easy fight for Fulton, and it was supposed to be one of his most toughest fights. Listen, you guys have already heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again. Stephen Fulton, he will completely annihilate Inoue. Inoue was getting hit at will when he was fighting against Nonito Donaire. Any fighter that gets hit at will by Donaire, you're not going to have that much of a chance against someone like Stephen Fulton because Donaire is not even a boxer. Donaire has never been known for his slick technical style. He's been known for being aggressive coming forward and banging with you. And Donaire, he was actually outboxing in a way in some of those rounds in the first fight. So I don't see in a way beating Stephen Fulton and I don't see him beating the beast Aleem as well. Now, when it comes to the MJ fight, that's a little bit more of a toss-up because he has a lot in common with Inoue. They're both explosive punchers, but they both lack defense and get frustrated when they're in there with boxers. And I've already told you guys, power doesn't really mean too much if, number one, you can't land your punches, and number two, you don't have a good defense. Now, power will definitely get you somewhere if you're fighting against weaker opposition. But once you step up in competition and you're facing the elite guys, your power has to be just as impressive as your defense and your intelligence in the ring. And I think when it comes to Stephen Fulton, you could check all of those boxes. Not only is he already a more intelligent boxer with better defense, a higher boxing IQ, but he's naturally at a higher weight class. Usually, 
you know, boxers, slick boxers, they move up in weight and fight against a power puncher and they can outbox him because they outthink him, like a Floyd Mayweather, for example. Floyd, he can move up five weight classes and fight guys 20 pounds bigger than him that are much stronger than him because he's going to beat you with his intelligence. And it's not going to matter how hard you punch because you're not going to hit him. But when it comes to NOA, it is the complete contrary. When he moves up in weight, he's going to be getting hit a lot, just like he's been getting hit his entire career against weaker opposition. The only difference is it's going to be much worse now. So there's a very good chance that we can actually get this fight between uh, Stephen Fulton and NOA next year, maybe the end of next year or even the middle of next year, because in a way he will end up being the WBO mandatory for Stephen Fulton's belt once he moves up because he's already the super WBO champion at 118. And it's really good news that he's going to end up becoming Fulton's mandatory if Inoue really wants to fight. First of all, we got to find out if Inoue really wants to fight. But if he really does want the smoke, he can become uh, Stephen Fulton's mandatory. And once he does that, the great news is it's going to go to purse bid, which means we're not going to have to worry about networks fighting over hosting this fight. So thanks to O Media, they are bringing some serious attention down to the 122 pound division. And because of it, we may end up seeing one of the biggest fights of the year next year. Undisputed champion NOA versus unified champion Stephen Fulton. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.